So if we go back to our videos, okay, so the shells were the next thing to be added. That's them in action. Um, there's no motion blur. There's, it's really basic. Again, I'm just building things up to make sure everything fits in place. I'm getting all the elements together. Let's see what this is. Ah, good. This is where I added the tracer rounds, and um, I finally put in some motion blur here so I can make sure the tracer rounds look proper, or at least proper the way that I wanted to see them. And this. So the tracer rounds, I will show you how I put those together. For this, I'll keep my particle view open because I know that I did it with a P flow. We'll go back to our layers manager, shut down the shells, and we'll go to tracer rounds layer. <coughs> Excuse me. Which again, you can see has the um, the little P flow uh, icons here. And when they fire, they're just they're running off the single axis point of the icon. You see the arrows are pointing that way. They're just following that way. Um, let's see. Again, tracers left, tracers right. You can toggle these off and on. And uh, an interesting, actually, uh, well, let me cover this real quick. So they're just shooting out to... Uh, they would shoot out indefinitely. I put a couple of delete operators on there. This one actually is longer. If you see the left tracers have a secondary function here, it's because um, I actually I built out more of the scene. Mm, what does that mean? Um, see how they stop quicker? It's because I built targets for him to shoot, or where targets will eventually be. You could. I'll bring up my layer manager. I'll show you that. Targets. There's only one target for now. But, um... You see, that comes with its own set of things going on here, which is a... There's a gravity, uh, a deflector thing, and a drag. So when the... Um, when the bullets or the tracer rounds hit that, they can, you know, move to the next step move to the next uh, process here which is uh, the collision and sparks um, this didn't make it any of the videos maybe it will eventually but um, I did set it up just for one to uh, and this actually does work this works works you know like uh, it's actually hitting that and for every trace around that hits, it's throwing off whatever amount of sparks. I have that set up just uh, randomly here through a collision spawn. If we look at this, it says spawnable 100%. That means every trace around that hits will spawn in the next event. It will spawn an offspring of 15 with a, you know, a variation of 50% which is, uh, I, don't, I don't know what that means. I don't know how Max works behind the scenes with that. Of course, half of 15 is 7 to 5, right? Um, I don't know if that means that, I mean, it's obviously not throwing off a half a spark. Seven and a half sparks, or if that means every time a cycle's through, you get one extra, or, or every other cycle through, you get one extra, or whatever it means. I'm not sure. But, you know, there's a bunch of things you can change with that. Uh, I, I don't know. There's, there's so many different things. You could just do whatever you wanted with it. Speed by service. If um, if the sparks were coming out too wide, you could change it to, like, uh, 45 or 40. And they will come out straighter. Um, 90 will obviously send it out in 90 degrees at the maximum. Um, I had mine set to 80. I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm not too worried about that right now. 
But anyway, that's why Tracer's left is has another uh, another set of operations happening. I didn't do it to the right. I just wanted to test it out, set it up, make sure it worked, which is a really neat thing about this is that if the Tracer rounds were to hit up at the top of this sphere here, it, the, it would take whatever um, facet or polygon that it hit and it would deploy from that angle. Um, what does that mean? It means that, uh, okay, if we look at the last tracer round, which kind of hits it at the bottom. Where are you at? This, this guy right here. Um, it's not going to spray out from where the other ones are spraying out from. It's, it hits, you know, right where it makes contact with and sprays out from there. On the angle, it hits at which is really important and it's a really cool option and of course that all depends on the angle what kind of a deflector you use things like that I want to show you one other thing see this see how the tracer round pierced through the back of that that's because when I created the tracer round the tracer round is just geometry that I um, I instanced uh, shape instance here and the reason it goes through all the way to the end is when I created the geometry, I put the, um, sorry, the ear itch. I put the, um, oh, sheesh, what is that called? The axis point? What is that, uh, you know, the point where it rotate and stuff like that from all the way on the end of the tracer. So when I used a rotation speed follow, they would all go in the right direction. Like, I could change this to a random 3D and, uh. And it would look like this. Yeah, because none of them are following the direction they're going in now. They're just going in a random area. So when I drop in a speed space follow, they all go in the right direction. But because my pivot point is all the way at one tip, when it hits, you know, the front of it, the pivot point is what triggers the collision. It's not the actual geometry. So I could change that if I wanted to by just putting the pivot point maybe in the middle of the trace around or whatever and then it would collide and you wouldn't see it come out the back. And that might be it for this. So, I mean, basically, like, if you wanted... It's like these ones, the other ones that don't hit the target would go off indefinitely uh, forever, but I have the uh, delete by age which means like each when each particle reaches the age of 100 which is uh, calculated in frames it will automatically just delete itself I could change that to a variation or I could change it to a million you know 200 trillion whatever 14 and it would obey but that's where we're at on this okay so um I'm going to go to my layers manager again. I'm going to turn off the targets. I'm going to hit C on my keyboard, snap back the camera, so we can um, get back to our character here. Uh, I'm going to turn off tracer rounds. Actually, you know what's a cool little trick? Okay, listen. If you get a... I hit P on my keyboard, by the way, to get out of the camera view. That just drives you back into a perspective view. Now, if you ever get... If you ever uh, have something selected and... Let's select. Oops. So that's a UV map. <coughs> let's say that we couldn't find this guy. He was out of here, right? And you search all... They say you couldn't even find this. Say you're just like searching around and you can't find where you're at. You can select nothing. Just click in the middle of nowhere. And whatever stuff is on your scene. Or you hit Z on your keyboard. And that will. It will go to whatever ge geometry you have in that scene. It will. You know zoom in as close as it can without. Hiding something. <coughs> 